Hello, everyone. This is Julie Vietas speaking from the teaching online SIG Rostiso, and I'm very happy to see you all here. So could you please state where you are right now? Earlier today at 3 p.m., I had people from all over Brazil, so I'd like to know if we have people from different places in Brazil. Passos, Minas Gerais, I'm also in Minas Gerais right now. I'm in Lagoa Santa, Greater Belo Horizonte, São Paulo, Belém, Natal, Vitória. That's amazing, Brasília. Two people from Brasília, Minas Gerais, Betim. Wow, very near me, very close to me. Uh, Pelotas, Ourinhos, Rio, João Pessoa, Seven Lakes, Minas Gerais. Oh, that's, that's funny. Uh, Botucatu, Salvador, Maryland. Wow, hello, U.S. Luiz, Luz, Minas Gerais, São Luís, Maranhão, Petrópolis, Rio de Janeiro, Pouso Alegre, Brasília, Sorocaba. Amazing. This is absolutely fantastic. So thank you very much for joining us uh, tonight in this session with Sandro Duofi. Before we, uh, we kick off, I would like to invite Vinícius Tavares for some uh, public announcements. So Vinícius, could you join us? Good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. Um, it's been a great week organized by Julio Vietas and the online teaching SIG. Uh, it's amazing to see how, how many people are uh, getting in touch with us to learn more about online teaching. And I personally hope that this becomes a thing now. Um, in a few minutes, we're gonna be having Sandra Dwarfi and the important announcements as usual. To get a certificate, please use the first link that you have here in the chat box. It's a bit.ly link, web feedback. Um, certificates haven't been sent yet, so they will. Uh, to join the Telegram group where we're advertising upcoming webinars, please click also the second link and feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notification bell to know when new videos come up. Uh, at this moment, we're working on the videos that have been um, sent or the webinars we have been we have presented. So by the end of the week, all the web all the webinars this week will will be there. And also, whenever we have a free webinar, we'll also um, make it available for everybody. This was a special uh, treat for you all over Brazil and the world because of coronavirus. So I, we know how. Uh, how much teachers need help in um, online teaching or these kinds of tools and how to better work online. So please feel free to watch the videos, comment and share the word, spread the word. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. Oh, if you have questions, please direct them to the Q&A button below here. And let's leave the chat box for all the comments. Okay. So if you see people, um, asking things in the chat box, please help them also remember that the Q&A button is for the questions and the chat box is for interaction. All right. Thank you very much, Julio. Uh, have a nice presentation, Sandro. Thank you very much. So, Sandro, could you join us? Hi there, Sandro. It seems to me that your mic is off. Could you turn it on, please? Oops. Here I am. Hello, yes, everyone. Now, now I can hear you fine. Great. Sounds excellent. All right. So, Sandro, thank you very much for being here with us. I mean, it gives me an immense pleasure to see you here with us uh, on the online teaching SIG, sharing so much knowledge. Sandro is a real star in keeping with teaching exams. So I'm adamant you're going to you're gonna be, you're gonna learn massively from this guy over here. Let me have the honor to introduce you. Sandro to you all. Sandro Dwarfi is a licensed Spanish language uh, teacher, TOEFL trainer, digital entrepreneur, and founder of both Global English For You and TOEFL Success. Sandro has been teaching foreign languages since the early 2000s. Sandro is based in Rio de Janeiro and has been mainly delivering online TOEFL prep training and other language training solutions as a freelance language tutor. Sandro has the CAE, CPE, TKT modules one to three certificates, Cambridge, UK, and a C2 level. So ladies and gentlemen, 
Sandro Dorfe. All right, here I am. Hello, everyone. Real pleasure to be here, first of all. Um, as I said in my video yesterday, I'm delighted and honored to be a part of it. Um, I'd like to congratulate Brasil so Online SIG on this absolutely wonderful initiative. It's really great to be here among so many talented, um, committed teachers in Brazil, uh, from Brazil, from around the world, and uh, wel welcome you all. Um, can everybody see my screen, by the way? Um, yes, we can. Okay. okay, then let me see if I can manage this chat box. If you could say yes, 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 it's beautiful. All right, lovely. So, um, as you know, I'll be talking about teaching exams online, and uh, I hope um, I'm able to help you, you know, with a, with a few tips, a few strategies on um, different um, uh, mainstream teaching exams out there. Okay, before I get started, um, I was thinking of Claire Venables, our storytelling diva. Uh, she, she usually talks about the importance of telling stories, and I'd like to start by sharing a couple of things about how I started teaching exams. Back in 2011, I used to work for the Language Institute on Fundão campus, UFRJ here in Rio. And uh, there was this guy who needed help, right? We're gonna be talking about him in a second. And my, my former boss back then came to me and said, look, Sandro, we've got this guy and uh, he needs help, right? His name is Del, by the way. Thank you very much, Del Moura. You're not here, but um, you have no idea how much you've helped me back then. And he said, look, he's going on Ciencias Sem Fronteiras. For, the, for, for those of you who don't know, the former government had a very interesting partnership with uh, many, many um, international academic institution, institutions all over the world. And many students from Brazil were there, uh, were part of this program. But um, one of the requirements before they went was to take an international certificate. And uh, in that case, it was the TOEFL IBT. And that's precisely what um, Tao needed. And uh, George, Jorgito, my great friend and, and ex-boss, he came to me and said, look, man, Tao is going to Australia and he's going to go on a, on a doctorate and he needs to take the TOEFL test. That's it, okay? And uh, we start next week. And I was like, oh, oh, all right then. So we start next week. Back then I was really lost. <laughs> I didn't know exactly what it was like to prepare people, you know, candidates to take um, international exams. I mean. I took international exams myself, but back then I hadn't taken the TOEFL yet. So that was a real blow. And I was like, Ooh, okay, let's do it. But uh, again, that was very scary. If you ask me, that was a real challenge, but um, I believe that out of challenge, there's always um, opportunities for, for you. So uh, I took the plunge and here we are. It's been nine years now. Okay. Um, there, there are a couple of questions, you know, uh, a few years later, I'm talking about 2015, 2016 now, I started asking myself a couple of questions like, um, hold on a minute, are my students meeting their needs? Um, yeah, they are. Okay, great. Am I, um, am I excited about what I've been doing? Mm -hmm, yes, I was back then. Okay, another question, am I, am I happy and do I still want to keep on doing this the very same way? No, not really. I didn't want that. And do I really want to keep on commuting around Rio like always? Uh, I've been teaching around Rio like for almost 20 years now. So uh, I, I started thinking, um, I really don't want to do that. Uh, if you're from Rio, you, you definitely know what it is like to live, um, to face Brazil highway and uh, you know traffic jam and so on. So I was really, really uh, uh, um, upset with all that every day, I know, every week, every month. And a last question I asked myself and uh, two actually very important questions were, what can I do well? And how big is this so-called digital market again? So I started thinking and I knew that there were like numerous opportunities and that's exactly what I focused on. And, you know, I'd like to share a little something with you. You know, ever since I was younger, I've always been kind of um, obsessed 
about two very common dimensions we have on, a, on our daily routines. I mean, uh, I was always very obsessed, and, and I still am actually, I'm still very obsessed about these two dimensions, which are time and space, uh, I mean, time and distance. And I'd like to share a couple of things. They won't make sense at the very first moment, but I'm, I'll, 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 I'll say what they mean later. Uh, first of all, I'd like to share that I absolutely love maps, okay? And uh, if you're not from Rio, this is a map of the, the, the metropolitan area of Rio de Janeiro. Uh, and I come from the west side of it, in, in that green point, as you can see. And I used to work back then in Ilha do Fundão, Fundão Island. Uh, that was a federal university camp. I mean, it is, it still exists. And the thing is, for me to drive from my place there, that was like 40 kilometers every day, every week. And then I started working downtown Rio. So we are talking about 47 kilometers now. And then I started teaching in Flamengo, another neighborhood. We were talking about 50 kilometers away from my place. Then I started teaching in beautiful Ipanema, Ipanema here in Rio. And now we are talking about almost 55 kilometers away from my place. So again, that got me thinking, oh my gosh, do I really want to spend all that time commuting? Do I really want to drive back home every day, every night after, you know, being so far away? And okay, I started, you know, doing some different things and things started changing. Um, at this point, I had quit, you know, at this point, I had decided to quit teaching, you know, in, in a traditional way, in a traditional setting. I wasn't teaching at this place on campus or on university anymore. And I started teaching privately, basically uh, um, online, you know, 100% remotely. And little, little by little, I started having students from different places. You know, very soon I had a few students from Sao Paulo. And again, my obsession about time, distance, and space. And we are talking about 432 kilometers. Next, I started having this student from BH, Savasi, I think. And we are talking about 441 kilometers away from Rio. Uh, next, I had this student from Brasilia. Now we are talking about 1,195 kilometers. Uh, then Curitiba. And uh, I got my first international referral. This friend of mine from Montevideo talked to a friend and this friend was very interested uh, about taking TOEFL preparation lessons. And I was like, hmm, interesting. Now I started asking myself some different questions. First, can I rely on my internet service? I mean, I, I had never really worked you know, uh, uh, with people from different countries. And, and from that point, I started asking myself different questions. It's still related to time and, and space. And now um, um, I'm talking about my first international students. I had this student in France and we are talking about over 9,000 kilometers away from my place. Next, I had this student in the UK in the city of Reading. And we are talking about different places around the globe, Portugal, um, um, Sydney, Australia, and I'm like, oh my goodness, these people are far away from my place, but can I still provide them with my services? Uh, I started again asking myself, uh, can I still rely on my internet service? All right, can I still, um, am I able to handle different time zones? I mean, in Rio, uh, we are at a, little, at a particular time in different cities, there are completely different times. So am I able to adapt to different time zones? And uh, another question, and that totally re relates to Felipe Lopez's presentation this afternoon. He was, he was talking about getting paid. It was like, oh my go goodness, how am I going to get paid? I had never been paid by you know, people from abroad back then. And that was a struggle, like, oh my goodness. But um, I came to friends who, who could help me out. Julio Vietas included me, included. He told me a couple of options out there and I was fortunate enough to get paid. So that's a, a quick summary of how things started. And um, these days I've been teaching remotely 100%, delivering task preparation sessions online. And that's precisely uh, what I'm going to start focusing on right now. Um, am I good with timing? Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, first of all, I'll be talking about tests. Um, what is a test, okay? 
Uh, I attended this absolutely wonderful session back in Caxias do Sul two years ago by Rafael Carpanese. He talked about um, exams as well, not exactly what I'm going to talk about, but he talked about that. And he asked this interesting question, uh, what is a test? A test is a method of measuring a person's ability, knowledge or performance in a given domain. That's the focus of our talk today. And uh, if we think about the, the, the market, that, that there's a number of standardized tests, aren't there? And I'd like to ask you a question. Um, why are standardized tests relevant? Why are they important? Could you please um, say what you think in the chat? I mean, if you could do it briefly, that would be absolutely amazing. Um, okay. They set a standard. Okay, sure. Study, work abroad. Very well. Same conditions for everybody. Uh-huh. Yes, trust has different students on the same basis. Mm -hmm. Anything else? They will give you a position on a nice university. They help people realize what they have achieved. Employers, interesting, employers value them. Yes, Camila, very good. I'm already, yes, because it's equal to everyone. Okay, so things are balanced. More trustworthy, Maida Matus, excellent. I like those ideas. Brilliant, brilliant, great, good. Okay, um, well, why are they important, really? They refer to, they, they are also used to, to indicate CPD, continuing professional development. I mean, uh, uh, I remember when I was a novice teacher, I was like, man, I have to take Cambridge examinations. I have to take the CAE. I had to take the, I mean, CAE, I'm old school, sorry. I had to take the advanced. I had to take the proficiency. And that's what I did back then. Uh, when it comes to language, of course, that also indicates performance, right? Uh, um, international exams, these in standardized exams, they're also... Uh, um, key performance indicators. And as Maida said, I think, uh, um, employers do value them. Market demand, quality assurance, standardization, student performance, and so on. Yes. And there are some other things naturally. Uh, we've got to bear in mind that um, these exams, they, they, they've got different levels. They go from A1 to C2. So beginning levels, intermediate levels, advanced levels. And uh, these standardized tasks can dramatically differ from each other. And uh, that's why I'd like to start talking about uh, the mainstream international exams right here. As you can see, we've got Cambridge suit where you got um, the, the proficiency, the advance, and so on. We've got IOTS, Michigan, uh, P, the PT Academic by Pearson, the TOEFL IBT. Uh, I'd like to ask you another quick question. How familiar are you with most tests out there in the market? A little, very familiar, like I'm completely lost here. Could you share that, please? Little. Simone Barreto Novaes, Little, Lost, Tata said she's lost, quite familiar, Petruca, Petruca, quite familiar, Darcy, a few of them, a little familiar, familiar, less familiar, familiar with TOEFL, not the others, more familiarized, For, uh, quite familiar, a little familiar, quite familiar, familiar, a little, okay, not so familiar with English exams, quite familiar, so very different opinions here, cool, nice, interesting, interesting. Okay, uh, I, I'm going to start talking about language skills. That's basically what they have in common, naturally. I'm talking about language exams here, okay? That's going to be my focus. So we'll be talking about listening. We'll be talking about writing. We'll be talking about speaking, reading. Platforms as well. I swear to God, <laughs> at this point, I, I, I believe that most of you have all been talking to adopting Zoom. So that's our pet platform. We all love it. So I'm not going to tell you special features. We've already had so many brilliant people explaining. So I'm just going to focus on a few things related to Zoom, okay? Not special features and so on. And a couple of tools as well, okay? 
Uh, when it comes to writing, uh, um, the first thing we're going to bear in mind is the following. Um, okay, are we teaching one-to-one? -one? Uh, are we teaching in groups? Okay, what text editors can I use? Am I going to be working on discursive, discursive essays, integrated essays? Okay, these are the first thing you, you've got to have in mind. The first one is these days we've got computer-based you know, computer delivery tests like the, the IOTS, like Cambridge, and, and I'm not entirely accurate with this information these days. When I took Cambridge, the whole thing was paper-based. And as I just said, paper-based, we've got exams that are paper-based. So basically no computer, no typing. And that's the first thing you've got to, to have in mind. Okay. Uh, whether the, te the student is taking it computer-based or um, in writing, right? I mean, uh, um, paper-based, you're going to, to know how to help him the best way you can over the internet. After all, uh, I think it doesn't make that much sense if you ask your students to get a notebook, a piece of paper, and, you know, work on a piece of writing, and then they, you know, show it to you over the camera or take a picture and share with you. So... I think by using the computer, maybe somebody can talk about interesting tools to do that. I, I myself, I usually work with text editors, but uh, bear in mind that on the actual test, chances are high, um, depending on the exam naturally, chances are high that students will be faced with paper, not really um, computer, like on, on the IOTS, on the TOEFL IBT exam, for instance, okay? Okay, talking about tax editors, uh, one thing you have to consider is maybe your student's limitation in terms of technology. I don't know, who knows? Maybe his, his computer has these constraints and he's got like notepad, wordpad only. Okay, uh, we are all familiar with the old and reliable Microsoft Word. You can also use that, okay? Oops, okay. Um, so we've got the old and reliable Microsoft Word. We've got Zoom whiteboard, but um, if you ask me, I don't think Zoom whiteboard is a good idea for you to deal with writing, okay? So one thing, uh, I've been teaching online 100%, uh, um, like full-time for the past two years now, but believe it or not, I started using Google Docs very recently, like, uh, a couple of weeks ago, believe me. So Google Docs, I absolutely love it. The solutions uh, Google provides you with it, when it comes to texts, when it comes to, to spreadsheets, when it comes to presentations also. So I use Google Docs for texts when students are, uh, have got to write essays. I think, I think the pack you've got is absolutely helpful and you can do a lot. Okay. Um, are you guys asking me stuff? <laughs> Internet is not working well in my building. Okay, are your students living abroad, Brazilian ones? Yes, they are Brazilians. Uh, employers value them. Okay, great. I, I completely ignore, I'm sorry guys, I completely ignore the Q&A box for a second. Anyways, um, this is the script. I used it yesterday on Notepad, on WordPad to prepare the video, to invite teachers to watch this webinar. So it will look like that, the old and classic notepad layout. We've got Microsoft Word here. This is another piece of writing. This is something I was working on from another um, training. Uh, in that case, I'm the student. Uh, um, Zoom text box. Um, this is something I was working on. I also work with um, the PTE academic uh, preparation. And uh, this is something that I sort of adapted to uh, writing activity. This is actually Zoom text box. This is what it should look, uh, that's what it should look like. Uh, as I said earlier, and I say one more time, I don't really recommend. Editing is not the best thing when it comes to, to Google, to Zoom text box. So I think you're better off uh, uh, um, um, wiser by using um, Google Docs, okay? So basically you share a link with your student uh, and while he's, he's working on his or her text, you're gonna be able to see what they are producing. 
and you can help out uh, in terms of um, structuring the, the text, you know, working on an outline, developing the, the essay itself. That's how I do these days. Uh, I think this is a sample of um, um, TOEFL, okay? Uh, TOEFL IBT writing section. And uh, I'd like to talk about the different kinds of essays as we're talking about writing. Okay, I've got, I think I got another question here. Yeah, I think I got the same questions. Okay, good. So far, so good then. Discursive essays, um, this is what a prompt will look like. This is from the PT, PT not PT academic, I'm sorry, Cambridge proficiency. Um, this is what a prompt from the writing task will look like here. The student is supposed to summarize and evaluate points from different texts. Another sample of a discursive essay uh, we've got here from the IOTS, uh, the official Cambridge guide to IOTS by Cambridge. Here, um, the student will be dealing with uh, summarizing description. He or she will be dealing with, with visual information. This visual information can be a graph, a table, a map or a diagram, and they will have to work on it. Okay, what else? Here, we've got a model of the TOEFL IBT integrated assays. First, the candidate is supposed to deal with the reading passage. Even though we are talking about writing here, it's that, uh, uh, that's the very reason why it is called integrated. Uh, even though it is writing, we are talking about a reading passage here. Uh, then the student will listen to a lecture. Okay, here it's academic material. And finally, they will have to type in the answer into as a response to a question that they will be asked. That will um, request them to integrate, to synthesize information from the different sources, both the reading and uh, the lecture. So um, that's the point. You know, depending on the kind of prompt, writing prompt the, the candidate is working on, you will have to decide this is going to be up to your educational purpose with your with your student the platform you're going to use either zoom i mean not zoom zoom is a, is mandatory you always want to use zoom but i mean if you're going to use word or google docs or or, or zoom whiteboard I, I love zoom i definitely do but i don't really recommend um zoom, zoom for for writing long passages okay it's not, that, that are lots of other better options out there, okay? So that's what the writing integrating task looks like. Okay, um, another thing, speaking, another fundamental um, language skill that we can definitely help our students with. Uh, a couple of questions you might, uh, you might wanna ask yourselves when it comes to speaking. Okay, will I be teaching one-to-one, -one? it's me, and another student only one to one or am i teaching groups okay uh regardless of the format okay regardless of the setting you are you'll be dealing with you have to decide uh, this is going to be up to your classroom management okay the same thing you would do uh in person all right face to face as we say uh zoom breakout rooms actually i'm not going to talk about zoom breakout rooms very soon you will have material that very special material, uh, very special tutorial on how to deal with Zoom breakout rooms. Thank you, Julio. You're gonna save me a lot of time here. You can refer to Julio website, Julio Vieta's website. He's going to provide you with you know brilliant material he, he just prepared. Um, what else? I, I'm gonna talk about speaking here in the different exams and also feedback. Something that uh, um, by doing online we are definitely an advantage and I'll show you why and how. Okay, first of all, there are very different ways uh, um, you're gonna go about speaking uh, when it comes to international exams. I mean, candidates may be faced with each other and that will be a, a, an official examiner uh, um, assessing their performance. Th that's one thing. Uh, for instance, when it comes to IOTS, Cambridge, Michigan, uh, here it's a one-to-one -one interaction. So it's a human examin, and I'm going to explain to you why I mean human in a moment. So here we've got a human examiner uh, assessing these one student, uh, this one student's performance. 
something very similar in the Michigan exam. Here we got a picture of the Michigan speaking test. So basically similar model, you've got a single candidate interacting with the examiner, eliciting questions, interacting with the, with the student, but only in the sense of keeping, you know, his or her uh, um, talk time, talking time going. Uh, another example here I'd like to share with you is the Cambridge exam, uh, Cambridge advanced speaking test. As you can see, we've got two students here. So students take exams in pairs, sometimes as a trio, like I did in the past when I took the CP, CP <laughs> the old school teacher again, when I took the proficiency exam by Cambridge uh, back in the days, that was, um, that was an interaction of uh, uh, three students and an examiner uh, eliciting questions, interacting, you know, delivering us prompts for us to talk to each other, and another one taking notes, grading our performance. Okay. Um, well, so that can be individual, that can be in groups, as you can see. And in this case, just like IOTS and Michigan, candidates are interacting with each other and uh, with a human examiner, right? Another completely different format is when um, tasks are delivered over the internet, over, over a computer. I mean, the TOEFL, for instance, is 100% computer delivered here. We've got a, a little bit of um, the TOEFL speaking section. Sorry about the typo down there. So the student will basically you work with a headset where he or she will listen to different prompts. That might be questions, that might be listening material. Uh, I mean, uh, listening passage, for example, or, or prompts only. And they will have to uh, respond to that. And uh, at this point, I'd like to share uh, uh, one of my students' performance so that you, you know what you can do with Zoom, this, this platform that we like so much. Uh, this week, I, I asked these students' permission to share this with, with you all. And, and by the way, thank you very much for having referred him to me, um, Rodrigo Sigoli, if you are there. Uh, where are we? Resources, TOEFL, yes, here we are. Can you please say if you can hear what I'm about to share now? Three, two, one. So when I'm preparing for our... Okay, can you hear that? Let me see if I've got yes. Yes, 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 yes. Gorgeous. All right. Research project. Uh... Okay, one more time. So when I'm preparing for a research project, I uh, usually go for academic journals, uh, mainly because they are more reliable. Uh, usually, you can see if they are really updated on the state of art. So you are not talking about something that it's, it's probably not uh, relevant in the current state of affairs. Yeah. Okay, that's just a little bit of um, just a snippet of um, this lesson I was delivering. Something very nice I'd like to, to talk about here is the following. C could you all hear that, by the way? If you could, you know, type in the chat box. Could you all hear this student delivering his spoken answer? Yes, 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 sure. Okay, thank you. Great. Um, something interesting about this is the following. Um, something that I absolutely love about Zoom is a feature called uh, record, right? You, you've got the, the Zoom menu or toolbar, if you wish, and there is this round button that reads record. You click on it and it's magic. The session is recording, simple, simple. So what can you do? Uh, let's say that today, today is March the 23rd. Okay, so you are dealing with the speaking. Today, uh, you are working on speaking. Uh, let's say that this is the, the last part of your lesson. In the upcoming lesson, you wanna go back to this recording that you work it on with your student and by using what, what the student said you're going to give him or her him or her um, uh, feedback and i really really like that because you can give very effective guidance you can give you can deliver very effective support to your students how can he or she do better 
Like, how can you help them with pronunciation, say vocabulary, um, grammar, depending of um, naturally, depending on the, the scoring information you are dealing with, you are based on, because that can also vary a lot when it comes to Cambridge, PT Academic, TOEFL, IOTS, Michigan. So the more familiar you are with all this scoring information, uh, uh, the more assertive, accurate, you know, helpful you'll be as a trainer. Okay. Uh, another sesh, another skill I'd like to share with you is listening. Okay. And here we'll be talking about prep guides. Uh, that should be an S here. Prep guides, websites, YouTube, and apps. Okay. First of all, uh, um, regardless of the guide that you adopt, say it um, uh, um, Cambridge, uh, uh, IOTS, Michigan, PT, Academic, TOEFL, whatever, you name it, you are going to uh, share audio material with your students, okay? They are going to have to be familiar with the different listening question types, okay? And it's your, it's your job to know how to share that. Um, I, I think this is something that, uh, I'm not entirely certain at this point, okay? It's been a while now. Uh, uh, very full, very full four, five past days and so many uh, uh, wonderful sessions here, but I'm not really sure if somebody ever um, at any point talking about sharing audio. I believe they, they have, okay? But um, there are many different audio formats out there for you to share with your students, say MP3, MP4, DVD, ROMs, YouTube. You know, this is gonna be up to your imagination, creativity. The sky is the limit, as we usually say. So um, regardless of the format you're sharing with your, with your students, uh, um, how are you actually going to help them listening to whatever question types they have to? First of all, this is, a, this is what Zoom looks like when we are working with it. Uh, uh, um, let me just sec select the, this. I like this a lot. So uh, whatever you're dealing with on Zoom, there is the sharing a screen uh, feature. You're going to click on it, and uh, that will be that will be these different windows depending on the the tabs that you, that you've got open on your desktop. Uh, that would be, for instance, the the Zoom whiteboard. Uh, that will be that will be Google Chrome or whatever camera. So. Uh, I usually save all my task preparation material in different folders. So let's say that you've got the IOTS folder. You wanna click there, you're going to select the audio material you're going to use. And very importantly, very important, you're going to click on share. Oh, no, 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 no. Actually, before that, you're gonna select whatever you're going to share. Then you're gonna click on share computer sound and another very important step before you get started, share screen again, and then you're good to go. Uh, just one last tip I should give you, make sure that you click on stop share after you, you start sharing audio material because sometimes you're sharing your desktop unnecessarily or something inappropriate. Uh, one thing is sharing audio and another completely different thing is sharing your screen they can be independent steps of your lesson. So just make sure you've got everything set there when you're dealing with um, listening, okay? And when it comes to listening, as I said, you can perfectly refer to the material uh, um, accompanying the, the guide that you purchased, uh, whatever the, the, the task you work with. Uh, but um, another very important thing is, uh, um, uh, telling students to work on listening on their own. I mean, uh, this is something that they can, can perfectly do by themselves, okay? And uh, there are a couple of things that, that really contribute to improving students' listening skills. I'm talking about this website that I highly recommend, VOA. Uh, um, another thing, TED Talks, I, I believe that most of you or at least a number, a significant number of you are familiar with TED Talks. Uh, BBC Learning English, this is uh, uh, somewhere they can always go to listen to different types of sources in English, naturally. And that, that works for um, 
Michigan, um, Cambridge, TOEFL, IOTS, you name it, TED Talks, absolutely fantastic. I really like this. Uh, you know, as I teach the TOEFL exam, I'm going to be a little bit biased here, and I'm going to refer you to the um, ETS website if you prepare students for the TOEFL exam. But um, you can always go to Cambridge exam to to Cambridge website. You can go to Michigan Language Assessment and uh, whatever the test you work with, and they will provide you with extra material, hopefully. I I'm referring to TOEFL because that's what I do on a regular basis. But um, all both VOA, BBC English, TED, and all this stuff, they are websites and they are also apps. So just, you know, it's up to you. Refer to your students all these places where they can, you know, get extra information, uh, like sample material that will help them be more and more familiar with the with the exam, the different modules, the different question types that we'll cover each of the sessions. Uh, this is ETS websites, ets.org slash TOEFL. And the last step, basically, I'm going to, to do the same thing as I did about listening, okay? Refer, um, you're gonna be dealing with, um, with texts, of course, but um, there are very, very different ways how you can approach texts. Uh, I mean, we'll be dealing with text comprehension skills, uh, um, your, your job is to help your students with task taking abilities as a whole. And uh, it's up to your teaching you know, objectives, how you're going to go about reading comprehension, the formats, the, the, the platforms, the different tools you can use. I remember last night, Ana Carolina delivered this amazing session with so many helpful uh, um, tools and, 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 and things that can can help you out um, working with false and, and you know uh, um, true and false sentences for instance uh, they can they can you can work on vocabulary there's just a lot of things you can do when it comes to listening and reading and again I would refer you to the the preparation guide that you think is more appropriate this is going to be up to the best of your judgment all right why the reading section, in each of those tests will vary dramatically, okay? So depending on, on the test you deal with, you will see very different question types. So refer to the guide that you believe is appropriate and more helpful to your students. I remember that back in the days when I first started teaching TOEFL, I went to bookshops, you know, I took a look at, you know, different guides. I talked to people, I went online. <laughs> I even went to this workshop in German China, Minas Gerais, I went to that to that federal university, say, I don't know, four years ago, and uh, I, I really wanted to be, you know, well informed when it comes to, I mean, when it came to TOEFL preparation. So uh, ETS put together this workshop on the federal university, and I was I, I, I took a plane, I got a bus, I went all the way there to learn, you know, as much as I could. Uh, and uh, how, how long <laughs> am I supposed to go? Okay, I think I've got 20 minutes, great. So uh, another thing I'd like to share with you so that you can work with vocabulary is Anki. Anki is a great um, app when it comes to flashcards that also trains memory, that also trains retrieving information that you learned in, in, in you know, past sessions. You can tell your students to download the app and, and work on you know, different vocabulary, you know, things that you, you share during the sessions with them. Another one, Quizlet. And here, there will be lots of different uh, um, vocabulary items. This is Quizlet, by the way. Here, the, the student will find lots of different subject areas and Depending on the exam they, they are they're going to sit, that will be very different uh, subject areas, say uh, philosophy, politics, biology, uh, math, languages. So uh, th that doesn't really mean that they need to master different subject areas, but I, I believe that um, the more familiar they are with key terms related to different uh, um, areas, the better. Why not? 
but most of the time the students not, they they're not really supposed to have prior specialized you know uh, knowledge on any subject area and, and that's very good i think uh, another thing is uh magushi that's another very interesting app and similar to anki quizlet uh, uh, magushi will provide you with a you know, very helpful to, uh, um, in that case, I'm being biased here again, inevitably. They, they've got very interesting TOEFL-related flashcards, and that can definitely help you, uh, um, you know, work on, on vocabulary with your students and other things that's up to your creativity, your teaching um, purposes. Uh, but there are lots of other uh, um, uh, um, professionals you can refer to when it comes to Cambridge exams, say you've got Igor Igor Cavalcanti, we've got Sergio Pantoja, Taylor Vega, uh, people who can also help you out with other task preparations like uh, IOTS. You've got in the UK, Vanessa Lima, lots of amazing, really wonderful uh, um, people who can help you out with exams. Uh, I'm not really so sure about Michigan, but I also work with uh, the PT Academic by Pearson. And that's about it. That's about it. Uh, yeah, I think we've got we've got like fifteen minutes or so for Q and A. All right, Sandro, that was amazing. Thank you very much. We have um, six questions here. Um, so before we move on to the questions, um, as you can see, we have here uh, some um, Instagram accounts. So I do I do suggest you you subscribe to Sandro's. Uh, Instagram accounts. Um, Adamant, he's going to share some more tips over there. So please follow him over there. And now we can proceed to the questions. Um, okay, so internet's not working well in my building. Which, which would be a good speed for teaching exams online? Well, I usually tell my students that five to 10 mega is, is minimum. You know, it's the minimum that you, you need to hear things well and make yourself heard. I think the most important thing when we are working online is being able to hear uh, your teacher and as a student, uh, um, your, your, your tutor will have to hear the things that you have to say. So the most important thing is audio. Uh, at the very beginning, people are very, very concerned about uh, gray camera and video, uh, at the beginning, you don't really need to be that worried about video. As long as you're able to hear your student well, your student can hear you just fine, I think you're good to go, right? So at least five to 10 mega, but um, the more, the merrier, I think, the more the better, in fact. I agree, Sandro. Um, are your students living abroad Brazilian ones? Uh, they are, they are, they are all Brazilians. Uh, there, there was this, there's this student in, in France who's got this very strong French accent, but that's because she's been living in Paris for the past, say, 12 or 13 years, but she's, she's Brazilian, <laughs> just like most of us. All right. So, Sandra, how fast is your broadband internet? Uh, we are talking about 90, 90 mega download. Good, good, good. You mentioned guides. How do you work with these with your students during the lesson? Um, do you use the online component, component that comes with the guide? Do you create your own slides from scratch from the print material? I do a lot of different things depending on the, the student's purpose. I mean, uh, um, I, I try my best to deliver very customized material and, and I, I try my best to deliver a very customized service as a whole. And we, we usually think about conversation, general English, when we do the, the, the basics of ELT, okay, that has to be customized and, and personalized and so on. But um, when it comes to task preparation, that's not any different. Uh, why is that? Uh, task preparation students, they usually have, uh, uh, let's say the three profiles, at least. That's, at least those are the ones that come from the bottom, you know, from the top of my head. Uh, students who, uh, who have already taken the test, whatever test we are talking about here, Cambridge, TOEFL, Michigan, whatever, and they are sort of familiar 
with the test formats. That's one profile. Uh, another profile is uh, um, the, that kind of student who uh, um, they have already given it a try. They know something they've seen online or they've got a friend or family member who have already taken the exam and they are somehow familiar with the exam. And another one that is the, the completely lost candidate. They know nothing at all or very little about the exam. So uh, you're going to, to bear that in mind as well for you to give be, you know, the best guidance support you, you can, you have to understand what that student, those students' needs actually are so that you can meet them the best way you can. Great, Any other great, questions? great. Yes, yes, we have uh, five more questions. Um, just a suggestion uh, you, for, for you teachers uh, with us right now. So don't send your questions through the chat, but rather through the Q&A. That makes our life much easier. Do appreciate that. Thank you very much. Do you think our future online activities are going to be the same after this week? Uh, could you repeat the question, Julio, please? Sure. Do you think our future online activities are going to be the same after this week? Yes, and I can see that from very, very uh, um, bright eyes. I mean, from, on the bright side of the, this whole thing is we've got a lot of people producing things. And I really, I truly want to believe that uh, teachers who are now joining the digital environment, they're going to contribute with lots of different ideas, lessons, material, and yes, I think it's going to change for the better. That's what I strongly yeah. believe. Um, what tools do you use to help students practice for the exams? Do you recommend Google Forms or another tool of your preference? I recommend just <laughs> so much. Okay, I recommend working by themselves, and that means working on reading and listening materials whenever they have the time, because I strongly believe that if you are a good reader, chances are high you're going to be a very good speaker. You're going to be a very competent user of the language, not, all, not only speaker, but also you're going to write better. And listening is going to dramatically help you in terms of uh, modeling, pronunciation, you know, uh, getting you from, uh, exposed to real language. And that way you can improve not only pronunciation, but also you can improve your grammar, the, the knowledge you have over grammar, uh, vocabulary. You can definitely increase your vocabulary range by listening to preferably, okay, task preparation related material, okay? We, we, the regular English teacher will say, oh, watch Netflix, listen to music, you know, watch movies. That's very helpful, absolutely. But um, when we are talking about preparing for exams, we are talking about very specific kind of uh, um, preparation. I mean, very specific use of the language in the sense of developing, uh, you know, strategic subskills in order for you to achieve a high score. And so if you can listen to podcasts, for example, related to the tasks you are sitting, that's a much better idea, I think. Good, good, good. Um, an interesting question um, by English Goals. Sharing classes through Google Drive could be a good thing. How far can you control, can you control your online material from copyright violation? That's a very interesting question. Um, first of all, I don't uh, effectively share my material with my students in the sense that whatever I provided them in the lesson I would make available on any platform. I just basically share slides like uh, we did in this lesson. And then I provide them highlights of what I explained, for example, or for instance, error correction, uh, vocabulary that we work it on. But um, students usually have their guides like I do. Here you've got a physical version of the IELTS, PTE academic, TOEFL test. So students usually have their own, be it digital or, or a print version. It doesn't really matter to me. This is up to the student's uh, decision. That there isn't much we can influence on our sides, but um, I don't really provide students with PDFs, for instance, or 
my, the, the, the e-books by the, the pub, publishers that develop and uh, you know, manage these exams around the world. The ones that I got, uh, I don't provide my students with, but um, the students uh, um, can, can have different, different ways to you know, get the, certific the certificates, the, the preparation guides they need. And this is something we cannot really control on the other side. Good, a question um, by Delaney. We suppose we suppose to use Google Hangout meets uh, Google Hangout meets to start teaching these prep courses, prep groups at the place I work for. We're not supposed to use any other uh, for the time being. Are the resources okay with this platform? We're talking about Google Hangouts, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Who is this? Who is asking this question, Julio? Lenny. 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 Uh, I don't know if you had the chance to watch my uh the follow the fellow speakers who have delivered sessions the past five six days now uh most of them if not a hundred percent of them talking about zoom this is definitely our pet platform uh we believe that zoom provides students with very very helpful very important teaching features i mean if you are a teacher uh zoom will definitely help you so much if we compare it to other interaction platforms, I uh, I haven't got um, I I just can't remember the last time I used it, Google Handouts, for instance, or Skype, or any other platform. I think Zoom is more than enough to do the trick. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, okay, we don't have time for more questions. The last the last question is going to be the one by. Mori or Mohi, I do apologize if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Uh, question by Tatiana. When you're practicing for the speaking test, does your student see the time on your screen? Oh, this is something very interesting. There are different techniques you might want to use. Okay. What I usually do is encourage students to use their timer. This is an app that they usually have in their phones, and they usually will set time for preparation, time for the response. And this is something that they do on their side. And I also can keep track on my side with my phone, okay? And uh, when it's, this is something that I believe that most trainers should be, I mean, all trainers should be very picky, very fussy uh, um, in terms of setting times, because when it comes to speaking, most exams are the same. You've got this particular amount of minutes, say seconds, you've got you know, to prepare, and then you will finally deliver your spoken answer. So from the preparation stage, you are supposed to go ahead and help your students with um, managing that time the best way they can, as efficiently as they can. Yes. You, That's you what I do. Uh, sorry. A question by Arthur. Could you clarify that can I rely on my internet part? I, I imagining problems, I'm imagining problems with sure. my connection. With connection. Sure. Okay. Um, when you don't work online, basically you use the internet to stream videos, stream music, use social media, check email, play games, maybe the regular thing, right? When it comes to teaching online, you've got to make sure that your internet service is reliable, preferably very, very, very reliable. You really don't want to have internet service, you know, trouble while you are teaching online. When I, when I was, uh, when I first started teaching online, I don't know where you're from, Arthur, but I'm from Rio. And here in Rio, we have this company called Oi Fixo. Unfortunately, I can't say they offer you the best service when it comes to internet. So very quickly, I had to hire a new service. And fortunately, this has been very reliable. I hardly ever have trouble. So this is something that you always have to bear in mind. Uh, not only your computer, but also your internet service. That's like uh, teaching online 101. That's very, very basic. Uh, Ryan, a uh, question here. Please, what's the tool you're using to show the photos? 
photos. <laughs> I'm sorry, but um, which photos? Uh, this is Microsoft PowerPoint, and that's exactly what I used throughout the whole session, uh, except for when I shared, except for when I shared these students' uh, speaking practice. That was Windows Media Player, and I basically use it Zoom. I just stop it sharing. I, I went to Zoom, I selected this folder where I kept this student's answer, and that was it. This is Windows Media Player. So Unless I, I forgot you know, one of the, the moments of the session, if you could refer to, to it a bit more accurately, I'd appreciate it. I don't know exactly what this person refers to. So how effective do you think these tests really are? Are they mandatory for teachers? Mandatory? Uh, they're not mandatory depending on where you work. But uh, I think it's more of a how far you want to get as a professional. How, uh, how much quality you want your service to, uh, uh, to have. You know, how much quality you want to deliver as a professional. Uh, I believe that language exams are very, very important, but they're not the only thing, right? Uh, there are so many other things we can do to develop as professionals, but uh, that's a very personal point, right? If you go to, to you know, groups or, of teachers where teachers talk to each other, where groups interact on, on Facebook, for example, there is professors, English, professors and scholars in English, for example, Brout, very often people say, oh, what is more important, uh, TOEFL, Cambridge, CELTA? I, I think it's a very important and very, very personal decision, right? I think everything is important when it comes to developing as a professional, as a person as well, because you, you learn not only the language, but when it comes to TKT, CELTA, we are talking about teaching, right? Developing your our teaching skills is also very, very important, but um, I, I understand that it's usually a considerable investment for most teachers, but the Cambridge exams are very important, in my opinion, okay? IOTS, uh, TOEFL, you name it. Good, good, good. Um, question by Mohi. Um, I teach kids from public schools. What platform or app would you recommend in order to have a feedback of, of the learning? platform uh i think zoom does the trick most of the time but mm -hmm. when we come uh, when it comes to teaching kids from public schools we are talking about groups okay and we are talking about public schools so uh, a couple of questions you might want to ask yourself uh do all my students or at least do most of my students have access to uh the internet do they have internet access easily uh, okay, do they have a computer? Because it's very important to have a computer. You can use Zoom with your mobile phone. It, that works, but that's not really the best place for you to, to stream your lessons. Uh, you want a desktop computer, a notebook, preferably. Uh, an another thing that wasn't really in the scope of my session, but I think it's appropriate here. Um, while I was delivering this session, I had a plan B here ready to use in case I had trouble. And uh, at the beginning, we, we, if you don't have a desktop computer or a notebook or a tablet, I don't know, you usually go into rely on a single source. I mean, on a single device, be it your desktop computer, tablet or a notebook, I don't know. But um, in time, you really want to consider, you might want to consider investing in a second computer. I, I highly recommend I can say that I, I just got this laptop computer like recently on the last Black Friday. Yes, I did. And I'm very happy to have like a backup computer in case this uh, uh, desktop computer I'm using here fails. And I'll tell you something, that will fail at some point. Yeah, we mm -hmm. don't want that, but boo, happens, okay? <laughs> More often than we would like them to happen. 
Any other questions? All right. Well, that's all we have time for, unfortunately. So, uh, Sandro, that was, I mean, absolutely fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for being here thank with you. us and sharing so much with the audience. Um, really honored to have you here. And thank you very much, uh, English teacher who has been with us so far. Tomorrow, um, we're going to have Talita Hashati at 3 p.m. And she's Don't based in the U.S., and teaching English from the US to students from many other places. She's gonna talk about using authentic resources online. Mm, that's unmissable. And on Wednesday at 3 p.m. as well, we're gonna have Ellen Aga talking about bringing English as a lingua franca into online classes. That's really innovative, isn't it? And you can't, you shan't miss it. So I see you tomorrow at 3 p.m. Sandro, thank you very much. Vinicius Tavares, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, Vinicius. See Vinny. you all tomorrow at 3. Cheers. Take care. Bye, everyone. Cheers.